The miracles of our Lord are, are part of his epiphany, his manifestation to the world, to the Jews, and to the Gentiles. And they are typological, especially the miracle which our Lord worked today, not only this one, but you know, the, the cure of the leprosy, which is a disease which, which, in which the person himself actually rots and then other miracles like um, the cure of the blind man and, and the cure of the, the, the man who is mute and, and the raising of the dead are typological in the sense that these are signs of the deliverance that our Lord wishes to work in the souls of each of us, deliverance from the rot of sin, from the blindness of our own pride, and the dumbness of our inability to give thanks to God, and the death, of course, of, um, of sin, and ultimately the second death, from which there is no deliverance, the death in hell. All of these things our Lord desires to deliver us from, and the external manifestations of his power over bodies, over physical things, is the sign that he is who he said he is, who he says he is, and that he can accomplish all the things that he has promised. And the people witnessed the miracles. We see at the end of the gospel today that the report of our Lord, the report of his power spread throughout all of the land and great crowds assembled to listen to him. And they came many times because they desired to be cured or for purely natural reasons as they did even after they saw our Lord work the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. They followed him across the lake because they were hungry, because they wanted to be fed again. But he told them that they should seek something higher, namely the bread of life. And so we hear at the very end of today's gospel that when they followed him around and came to listen to him and to be cured, he would withdraw in deserted places to pray. We wonder what our Lord in those silent moments prayed about, but one might speculate that to some extent it was praying that they would understand, that they would uh, come and, and be healed because that's what he came to do. He, and he continued to move around from place to place, curing and healing and, and, and performing miracles. But, uh, but you can imagine that our Lord prayed that they would understand that they would ultimately uh, repent and turn to God's mercy and would believe in the words that he was speaking to them because as the church teaches us, the, the, the miracles of our Lord confirmed the truth of his words and illustrated what he meant as these cures from leprosy and blindness, for example, illustrated the meaning of our Lord's words. And so we can think of the divine providence which led this leper to the feet of our Lord to ask for his cure. Uh, and the request of this leper was the request that all of us should make to the Lord and with the same dispositions because the leper said to our Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. And our Lord's reply is, I, I do will it be made clean. Uh, if you wish, we say to our Lord, if you desire it, you can deliver me from my sins. And that expression is an expression of hope. It's an expression of humility in the sense that the leper realized that he really didn't deserve this gift, but he was going to trust in God. So there was both this, this understanding of the gratuitous nature of God's grace and yet also of the, the, the realization that God wants this for us. He does want it if we're willing to humble ourselves before him. And, and 
we, we know what our Lord's going to say when we ask for the grace. He does say, I do will it be made clean. But we have to have that, that uh, conjoining of humility and confidence. And then the um, uh, consequent upon the, uh, the grace, which is that we should be grateful. He tells the, the leper to go and show himself to the priest and offer uh, what is prescribed in terms of the, uh, the offering in, in the temple. That should be for us uh, our participation in, in the Eucharist itself. You know, again, there's always many things going on. We are come and we are fed at the altar of God by our Lord himself. Who would presume to come to God's altar unless he commanded us to do so? Who would presume to uh, receive the Eucharist, to take our Lord and and consume him unless he commanded us to do so. This is the gift of God. He wills it. He, he wills that we should receive him. And yet the reception of our Lord himself uh, is itself our, our act of thanksgiving. The Eucharist, as we know, means thanksgiving. And our thanksgiving to God is this sacrifice of thanksgiving, which is the offering of Christ himself to, to the Father. And so we beg the Lord for the miracle of God's grace, the miracle of his healing from our sins and from our selfishness, knowing that he wills that we be healed. And we give thanks to him for the great gifts that he's given us and his, his presence, his real presence, his promises that he has fulfilled by remaining always with us uh, in his grace and in his power his power to heal, his power to deliver from the leprosy of sin, from the blindness of our pride, and for the death of eternal hell.